Hey, what's going on everybody? For Second We Munch, I'm Leo Vader and you're watching Spiciest Interview. Is that really the name we came up with for this? For the Hot Ones pairing? Yeah. Spiciest Interview? I know, we could have done better. I think it was too quick. Too quick to Maybe. decide. It's the show with warm questions and even warmer wings. And today we're joined by Haley McLean. She's a video game lawyer with Voyeur Law and the community manager at MinMax. You can catch her show Bonus Pod on Mondays at 4 p.m. Central on twitch.tv slash MinMax show. Haley McLean, welcome to the show. Thanks, Leo. I'm so happy to be here. We've known each other for going on eight years now. That's wild. That's crazy. And we've each come so far in that time. I remember when when yeah. you being a video game lawyer was a twinkle in your eye. <laughs> when I didn't think I'd make it, and every time Blake asked me, I got less and less sure. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You have the full hot sauce lineup from Hot Ones, right? I have the trademarked, all the, the 10 this current season Hot One sauces. And I have in front of me 10 wings, each individually sauced. So left to right, we got easiest, and then the last dab on the right. Wow. Beautiful. Yep. Fully sauced. Uh -huh. Have you sampled any of these yet? Nope. nope. I haven't tried. I, my partner was sampling them, putting little dips on his finger and licking them and going, whoa! So I'm nervous. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and he's good at spice, too. And just like hot ones, I want to go through this gauntlet with you, but I don't have the sauces, so I have other hot sauces instead. That is okay. And some of them are homemade. My cousin's homemade hot sauces, so you'll just have to take my word for it that they're spicy. Cute. No with the little to label on it. Corroborate that. Oh, God. And they're <laughs> sticking to my mouse pad. Uh, anyway, there's no segue on the show to when they start eating the wings. They just start eating them. And then there's the question because they have like video editing and transitions and stuff. So they have cuts and stuff. Yeah, we, we're not avoided that luxury. Yeah. So do you want to get into that first wing? Hell yeah. This one, you know how they always go. Yeah. This first sauce is a <laughs> is buffalo. Uh, see how many Scoville's? 1800. Not it's like Sriracha. At this most. is the one where they go. Oh, uh, that's not so bad. This shows easy. Yeah. Here. <laughs> this is when they get confident. Let me try. All right. <laughs> this show's a joke. It's easy as hell. <laughs> don't know what I was so afraid of. Okay, and I'll just have a little squirt wow. of sriracha here to match you. Okay. It's like I'm eating a a, a bowl of cream. Not even spicy mm. at all. Mm. It's actually really good. Mm. A yummy bowl of cream. What backup beverages do you have? I have six. I have a lemonada. I love those. A little baby Pepsi. Water. Tried and true. Although I hear water's not that good. Gatorade? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. A beer? I hear beer's pretty good. And something that I like beer. to drink when... I've heard great things about beer. Something I like to drink when I'm eating spiced food is tequila. I have a little marg. Okay, nice. Well... Yeah, it's like, you know, I don't usually drink tequila. Only when I'm like, oh... I want some tequila because it's so spicy. Sean Evans likes to match the guests, whatever they do, sipping the milk, sipping whatever, but I just have Sprite. So whatever you drink, I'll have a sip of Sprite. Sounds good. <clears throat> I've heard milk is good too. Right, but you got to swirl it around. You can't chug too much. That's what I find. You'll throw up? Yeah, makes it worse. Oh no. In April of 2017, you wrote an article for Twinfinite called Seven Cute Ways to Ask a Gamer to Prom. What do you think is the best way for a gamer in 2024 to ask another gamer to the Sadie Hawkins dance? <laughs> okay. What? Well, what do they always say? Wow, you've done your research. Yep, you have to say that. <laughs> wow, you've really done your research. I'm really impressed. How did wow, you know Wow, wow, Sean, you're like a hot nardwar. <laughs> wow. You're freaking me out, but I'm getting free food, so I'll be cool with it. Um, what's <laughs> ask a gamer to the Sadie Hawkins dance? Um, man, great question. I can't remember. I cannot believe I wrote that. Wow, <laughs> I've been really strapped for cash right now. <laughs> to think pieces. Was it your idea? Do you think, or was it? I'll take no, this. No, I got a sign. I think people were. It was probably near prom time, and people were googling. 
had asked blank to prom and we're like let's hop on that seo train yeah. and stick gamer on there um i could see someone doing something cute with like an animal crossing new horizons island decoration like making the dance there and then asking them in animal crossing i don't think we had the technology to do that back in 2017 no we've really improved since then I would say that. What about you? Wait, does anyone, do people ask Sean Evans the questions back? <laughs> not really. No, not really. I'm just trying to be a good friend, no, but I, maybe I should not. I appreciate that. Um, but the, mm-hmm. do you, what was your experience like at Twinfinite? Do you look back fondly on it? Um, yeah, I enjoyed my time at Twinfinite. They were really chill with how little I could work sometimes because um, when I wasn't, when I was just working retail, I used to do a lot more for them. That was delicious, by the way. I highly recommend the buffer. Great. Um, so I used to write for them all the time, doing the frickin' the newest mods for Sims 4, the newest mods for Stardew Valley. Um, here's the here's the drinking games you can play with your friends, uh, video games. Like, I would just, anything that stuck to a wall I wrote. And sometimes if I had time, I'd do, like, actual features I was proud of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that was kind of rare. Um, and then... Uh, but they were really chill. And then when I got into law school, I worked with them still for another year and a half or something doing like the bare men, but they kept me on the letterhead because it looked good on resumes and stuff. That was really nice of them. That is nice. Yeah. And they took me to my, my first and only E3 too. The only time I went to E3 was for Twinfinite. Wow. Must be nice. <laughs> we have a couple questions per, per Ooh. wing here uh, because we have a lot of questions. Fair. Oh wow, you over it. I thought it was gonna be like, oh, I just barely got ten, but you're over over questioning. We're over. To your honor. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes games ask you with a pop up a pop up if it's okay if they collect data on how you're playing. For every game that doesn't ask you, are they allowed to just collect that data anyway? Uh it depends on the jurisdiction. Um, but they should be getting your prior consent before collecting any kind of personal information is what it's called. So it's any data that could be compiled or just on its own could be looked at and trace the origins back to you personally. It's like your address or your email or a picture of you, your name, your SIN number, your underwear size in com- in combination with a picture of you, <laughs> that kind of thing. My SIN number. You, you, they yeah. count our sins? <laughs> Wait, what do you, you guys call it something else in America? That's your social insurance number? Yeah, social security, right? Oh, S-C-S-S-S-I? Interesting. Speaking of S-S-S-I, be careful around the eyes. Remember? Yep. I'll, I'll, Remember you know what, I'll, I'll make sure to use a wipe every wing. Even if it's the the pussy ones to start. <laughs> Just to be safe. Great. <laughs> Clean. I'm safe. Don't worry. Good. I'm uh, trying to fix... Uh, there's some echo, apparently, that I'm trying to fix. And I'm doing a great job of it, right? Yeah. Because I am not echoing anymore. Right? Audience in the future watching this as only a VOD, never live, like in the real hot ones? Right, and one more, and she's just gonna say one more test sentence, and then we'll be sure. I am just gonna do one more test sentence, and then I think we'll be sure. Yep, solved it, mastered it. Nice, you're on fire with these. I'm on fire in my mouth, and you're on fire with the. <laughs> hey, I'm matching you with my fire video production skills. <laughs> you want to get into that second wing? Yeah, hell yeah! So this one is angry goat, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Angry goat. Angry goat. Angry goat. Just has a picture. You think they put a goat on it? Um, this one is 5,800 Scoville. And charred flavor of blistered shizitsu peppers combined with savory garlic. Mm-hmm. Sounds great. Yummy. Do you know the trick for flats? On how to get all the meat at once? The bone breaking technique? No, I do it this way. So I... I grab the root of the wingy and then I push down with my fingers. I can't really show you because it's off camera, but and then all the meat just like falls off. You can just go slarf. 
We'll have to get a close up on that next time so I can better wrap my head around it. Oh, that's delicious. That's a good one. Mm. Mm. Oh, I got to do my sauce. Mm. Mm, I like that better than the, the buffalo one. That's this, a nice one. This show's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually getting pissed off and feeling lied to. That always Waste happens. Waste my time. Yeah. I thought I was going to feel spicy and then cut to me in like 20 minutes dying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> mm. Sean Evans yeah, also he... clears his throat before every question. By the way, they just cut it out, so the clearing <laughs> the throat is not additive. That is that is part of it. In August 2014, yeah. Burger King agreed to merge with the Canadian coffee chain Tim Hortons for 11.4 billion dollars oh. U.S. How did this merger start the decline of quality at your beloved Timmy Ho's? It ruined it. This is something every Canadian is passionate about. Good question. They ruined it. It used to be so... Tim Hortons was a special place. It was a place you go in between your classes. It was a place you go when there's a snowstorm and you just need to hang out with your friends for a minute. I had my first kiss in a, in a goddamn Tim Hortons. Wow. That's, how, that's how Canadian I am. I, that's what happened. And then... Fucking... Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> So I get about this. Burger King bought them and it just became how can we make this not breakfast food anymore? Now they have like chicken sandwiches and like bur mm. like melts and and all the things that were good, they made crappy to just expand the menu. And then they got rid of the the muffins that have little granules of sugar all on them. Those slapped. Now it's just a awful muffin. The peach juice used to be literally the best drink I ever drank in my life, and now it's so mid. The freaking coffee's the same. I'll give them that. Okay. Donuts. <laughs> Donuts aren't as good. The freaking wraps, they used to be like this long. They're half as long. Shrinkflation. They're, they're ruining Canadian culture. Wow. 100%. And it's been steady. Yeah. They, haven't, they haven't won your heart back. No, it's like, and I still go. That's what's annoying. Yeah. It's because I was raised on that cheap coffee. It, it, I can tell that it tastes bad, and I still love it because it reminds me of being seventeen in the library with my friends. You know. I have to ask about that first kiss at Tim Hortons. Was that romantic? <laughs> really nice, actually. Yeah, it was with um, that my first boyfriend, who I ended up dating for seven years. And we had gone, and then I lost, left my backpack behind, so we had to go back and get my backpack. Isn't that cute? Uh -huh. Makes me sound like I was 12, but I was like 18. <laughs> <laughs> the legal age to have a first kiss. I was a late bloomer, as they say in Canada and the US. You have Borat, <laughs> Zoolander, Scary Movie, and Avatar in your Facebook likes. How would you rank those movies today? <laughs> No, I don't. <laughs> you do. Borat. You do. We all do. I Can pray no one goes through mine. We all have that in there. Can you say them again? What are they? Borat, Zoolander, <laughs> Scary Movie, and Avatar. Um, I like Avatar. <laughs> I don't really like. I like Zoolander. Okay, one and two. Uh, I you you know what I had to do is go back. Man, you did your research. You know. <laughs> to do this go back <laughs> and unlike so many cringy because i was the person who was like uh liking all those groups it's like like this group if we, blah, blah. like yeah. and i would like eight thousand of them i don't know why i did that my brain at that age was just on something and <laughs> like, like this post if neville looks badass even in a sweater <laughs> <laughs> specifically liking that one and i brought it up to my friend Brittany, and i was like she's like what harry potter groups have you liked because we were insufferable and i was like i really liked this one with neville owning a sweater she's like that's mine and she was the one who made it and i remember she had like two hundred thousand likes on it or something and i was starstruck i was it changed my view of her i was like oh my famous yeah. and, then, and then at some point i mean i haven't gone on facebook in in a long time but i should go back and clear some things out if it says i like borat when did <laughs> i do that I, that's gotta be someone else on my account i swear to god was it me my uh fiance and i went to look at a house to rent and they had their like pug dog there and yeah. we were talking 
and they point at their pug and they're like right we're like sure yeah cute dog and they're like we saw you had uh the grumpy pug on your likes or your facebook likes <laughs> So we brought our pug along. And, she, and then after we talked about it, she was like, I must have liked that page 12 years ago. <laughs> wow. Did that come off as endearing or weird to you? I can see it going either way. It was kind of sweet, I guess. But it's like, a you know, an, ol an older person's understanding of Facebook and how much we all use it and think about it. Yeah. Like, remember poking? That was such a, it was an F you if you didn't poke back. Poking was huge. That was it was huge. That's how you let people know you had a crush on you. Like, poke, digitally poke them and not actually speak. The drama when someone didn't poke you back. You'd hear about it the next day in the yep. halls. Different time. Once during a high school assembly, you were hypnotized and ran on stage. Does a part of you ever think you're still in a hypnotic fog and you never left that auditorium? <laughs> Man, you did your research. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just say that? Yes, please. You please, say? please, please, please. Um, I was really embarrassed that happened. I was so shy in high school. I didn't talk to anybody. And the fact that I was told posthumously I was like doing chicken dance and stuff. Wow. And I, I really was kind of upset. It was because the people who went up to be hypnotized, that's pseudo consent, right? You're like, yeah, me, I want to do this. But I don't know why. It just, and I didn't really believe in hypnosis either that much. I thought people were like faking it on stage and the next thing i knew i woke up on stage and i got sent back to my chair and my boyfriend was like do you know what just happened and i was like i literally don't i thought i was sitting next to you he's like you just did so much. he had to like explain to me what happened it was really that is weird. terrifying do you, do you ever think about doing like, like hypnotic therapy or something knowing that you're a person who's susceptible hmm. to that that's a good idea for like i don't know i probably should look into that if there's anything you want to quit or whatever i feel like worth a shot I want to quit gaming. <laughs> <laughs> be hypnotized to forget every game you've ever played. Friend I've made while gaming. Next time I see you, I'm like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's like, how's your gaming PC going? I'm like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's get into that third wing. And I'm going to move right. up to my second hot sauce. Haitian Creole hot. This one I'm most excited for, honestly. It smelled really good. This one's... Pesquilla. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Shh. Cute bottle. It's cute, right? Like I'd put this on a little on a little purse and bring it with me. Uh, Sixteen thousand Scoville. So a bit of a jump up from the last one. Um, it says it's made in Brooklyn, Caribbean ground passion fruit, and it's a, a sticky tropical treat. Let's see. Yummy. You know what my problem is with the hot ones, hot ones sauce flight is ten hot sauces will last me three lifetimes. It's true. Mmm. That's really good. That's the best one so far. Nice. They've all been hits though. Mm -hmm. They've been hitting. What's the best place to grab a slice at University of King's College? Ronaldo's or Extreme Pizza? Uh, extreme pizza. Yeah, gotta be. I wasn't cool enough to stay out late to get it at a, an appropriate late time. I would get a slice and go home at six and have a bath. And that's more <laughs> accepted at extreme pizza? <laughs> that's the extreme way to defy social norms. Right. <laughs> Shouts out Ben oh, Hansen, by the way, who wrote a lot of these questions. <laughs> and did a lot of research, yes. Oh, that's so nice. I honestly feel weirdly, like, complimented that someone took the time to learn crap about me. It's like, <laughs> it's like a real nice feeling. <laughs> nice. Be honest. As an alum, do you pump your fist in the air during the line from Hamilton where he raps, I'm gonna get a scholarship to King's College. I probably shouldn't brag, but dang, I amaze and astonish. Or are your hands busy plugging your ears? I pump my fist. All right. I'm proud to be an alum. Yeah, older, oldest chartered university ever in North America, I think. Wow. Yeah. Old enough for Dan it's, Hamilton now, to want to go. Old enough for Mr. Hamilton. And uh, it used to be a really big college um, out in Windsor, which is a place near me. And then uh, it burned down. 
and there's a university in downtown Halifax and Dal- Dalhousie. And they literally were just like, here, have this little corner. <laughs> and they gave the tiniest little cube of space to Kings. And now it's just like a little small corner of there. It used to be huge and now <laughs> so small. But I went, I, uh, I liked going there. It was fun. The whole college is just a t- on a tiny corner of another college? Yeah, it's literally a little square. It's, it has a gym, two dorms, the big building, a chapel. Never went in there. And then uh, two more buildings in the library. And that's it. It's like literally within a kilometer. I don't know how many miles a kilometer is. No one a does. A few miles <laughs> around. Not very big. Hmm. You've been cleaning all the wings so far? Or just that? Yeah, your I mean, they're delicious. Mm-hmm. They look good. They're good. Mm-hmm. Ready for wing number four? I mean, yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. No rush, also. That one. That one was, that was a quick one. The Renal, yeah, they're kind I mean, of uh, in sections. such an easy pick. Got yeah. Themes. This next one. Los Calientes Bar Bacoa. 33,000 Scoville. Wow. I can't even count that high. <laughs> One, two. Bum, 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 um. <laughs> cool. Okay, I'm ready for this one to <laughs> actually be spicy. It. Let's see. This is four, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> That's a bad one. What happened there? <laughs> I heard the sound, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, it's not gonna sound great for you, but it will sound good for everybody else. Okay, cool. Mm, this one doesn't taste as good as the last one, but it's still pretty good. Mmm. Honestly, I don't. I don't feel the heat too much. It's okay. I can feel it, but it's like a nice heat. I'm getting reports from the chat that it didn't sound good for them either. Okay. <laughs> it didn't sound great for us either. <laughs> That's a Irish way of saying it. You famously mm. fought with Ben Reeves, a game informer, informer over Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, claiming it should have been a 3 instead of the 8.5 it was given. But you later found out it was actually Andrew Reiner who wrote the review. What's your problem with Nuts and Bolts, and do you feel differently in a post-Tears of the Kingdom world? told you that that i had that fight with him i remember that fight <laughs> uh i don't th- for some reason i feel like people aren't allowed to say they never do they never say oh here's where i found it they say we got our sources <laughs> but i just listened True. to an old episode of game query <laughs> where you <laughs> talked about it oh i just it's void it's a big voidy void empty space and all you do is drive a rickety cart that's not even that fun to build. <laughs> like, you know, the, the whole thing is it's building mechanics. Excuse me, Sean Evans is in scoff at his, <laughs> what? his guests. His guests are answers. usually right. Ex- oh, you are not so Rickety cart, first not- hour much? <laughs> Only play the first hour much? <laughs> uh, yeah, what else is there to do after the first hour? You build the cart and you drive around sand. Fun. One dude over there goes. Oh yeah, yoke, it's yoke, just yoke. a sand. And it's says, just a sand biome. That's you... the whole game. It's Arrakis from Dune. That's the whole Lo- game. <laughs> Loki kind of is. Oh so I think God. that's a freaking. It was so bad after Banjo Kazooie and Tui and three. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get because we got stinky nuts and bolts. It sucks, Leo. Why do you like it? I don't know. I haven't played it in a long time, but I thought it was cool. <laughs> I. <laughs> that's fair. Agree to disagree. <clears throat> I do wonder. I just remember that was the only time I like st- stood up, stood up to a superior <laughs> game informer. Every time, else, I was so shy and quiet that Ben was just like, "Yeah, like Banjo Kazoo or Banjo Nuts Bolts is really good." I was like, "Shut up, <laughs> shut, <laughs> shut up, got, sir." Got into it with me. <laughs> shut up, man who hired me that could easily fire me. Who from Game Informer or MinMax has been the most surprising to interact with? surprising oh what a good question hmm i did my research i know you've been at both places (laughs) surprising um man i don't know if anyone was if the word surprising 
resonates too much mm. with me with working with anyone specifically. Um, maybe just Ben, probably, of everyone. Not that I was like, whoa, what the hell? But just more in, like, figuring out who he is as a person behind the scenes and stuff and how nice he is also and <laughs> stuff. Not that I think he's mean. He has a mean online persona. But just, like, you know, I listened to the Game Farmer show leading up to being an intern there for so long that you, like, think you know people, and you don't. You never actually know people. <laughs> so when you actually get to know... Of all the people at Game Informer, I thought I knew Ben the most leading up to it, so then when you actually meet them, you're like, oh, was, they're very nice, but not what my brain had made up parasocially and weirdly. Yeah, that's interesting. I think, yeah, you see him on that show interact with people he's known for years and years, and yeah. we all have a specific way of being with those types of people versus with... With new people and different people who we, you know, over time form a different type of rapport with, you know. You have to earn that. Yeah, you can't just jump in. I can't just jump in with all the knowledge I have of somebody I listened to for a long time and be like, howdy ho, and joke around with them like I'm <laughs> Jeff -um or something. He's going to be like, what a yeah, freak. Yeah, like you're some Jeff. -um. It... <laughs> some, some classic Jeff. -um. But yeah, no, it's interesting. And, and that's why I think it's really important to like... Um, Work with people who are at the same place as you, because then you make that natural rapport. And then when you're old, older, <laughs> when you're old like Ben in his sixties, <laughs> you can have a cool show too. <laughs> that sounds so rude. He was like thirty-four when I met him. I yeah, think. Yeah, but he is sixty now. And he's sixty now. Looks good. I must have been five. Yeah. When you were doing your internship at Game Informer with Blake Hester, AJ Moser, and me, do you remember when AJ brought like a shitload of spaghetti in for lunch one spaghetti. day and everyone made fun of him because it was such a huge amount of spaghetti? It was a tub. It was, I took a picture. I could probably find it on my phone if you want. Great. I genuinely could probably find it pretty quick. <laughs> quick. It was a tub of, yeah, because I just go to 2016 and I know it was in August 2016. I could just rip back there quickly. I remember. Why were we on him so bad about that? But it was just like, dude, so much spaghetti. The fact that we're talking about it eight years later, a meal <laughs> that's since become poop and is <laughs> become a plant or something by now. That's we're crazy. We're all still talking about it. We're all still talking about that freaking spaghetti. It was too much. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was Blake more so. I was just kind of ribbing him to join in on the fun. But Blake was like, what the hell, man? Blake had a genuine <laughs> issue hell? with it. Yeah, like he was like, this is upsetting me. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, found it. I said, that's too much past AJ. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty big. Pretty big. I mean, yeah. Let's ask the audience. <laughs> too much. What do you think? You guys, right? There's the fork what in it think? for scale. A He's already fork. eaten a bit as well. Keep in mind that he had to eat for a bit, and then we noticed, and we looked over. So there was even more than Did that. Did he eat it all? Chet's wanting to know. I think so. I think so. <laughs> this is... <laughs> it took multiple. <laughs> this is him getting organized to get mad at us about how we're yeah, mad about Yeah, that's after he charged the over. camera. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hilarious. Good times. Good times. Good times Shouts out, AJ. Shouts room. out, Blake, for that guest question. Playcaster. Uh wing number five. Amazing. Let's get into it. Yummy yummy. Um halfway point. Way. Diablo. G Diablo. Diablo. A heatinous team favorite. Stand out the unique Filipino flavors. Power jab features a punchy mix of Italian, Jamaican, and Asian peppers with powerful aromas like ginger and garlic. Powerful. Let's Oh, I think I held up the wrong one for ginger goat earlier because there is one that has a picture of a goat. Remember how I ripped on it? I was like, where's the goat? <laughs> I, held up, I held up the wrong one. This doesn't even say ginger goat on it. What the hell? What the hell? This is a whole different sauce, <laughs> idiots. This one's angry goat. So, so still kind of messed oh, up. Oh, yeah. But there's no goat. It's, you're just mad at the I different get, sauce. Yeah, that's fair. I can't find this other one, but I mean, oh. Oh, this one looks good. It's kind of green. Diablo. Look a little guy boxing. Go check out Hot Ones. The All sound right. effects are pretty much the same. You'll hear pretty much that sound when you see a hot sauce. <laughs> this is 55,000 Scoville. All right. This is a drumstick. I haven't had a drumstick in a while. 
I've been getting mostly uh, flats. Mm -hmm. mm. I still like the third one the most. <laughs> <laughs> the sound suppression I made it so the Haley echo stopped is ruining the sound effects. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with here. Mm. I still like that, um, the fruit one the most. Okay. How is the spice level? I'm feeling it, for sure. More than the other ones. But it's not like too crazy i'm trying to make sure i don't eat them as fast as i have before to like give a little check and be like am i okay actually but this one's definitely the one i've noticed the most i'm like okay yeah that has like a decent kick to it okay so now i have fear in my heart all right mm -hmm. it's good though MinMax is an online entertainment company based in minnesota that focuses on games friends and getting better MinMax's flagship content is the weekly video podcast, The MinMax Show, which focuses on video game reviews and previews, industry news, and community questions. The company's output also includes live-streamed personality-driven videos, interviews with professionals in various fields, and documentaries. The company is led by Ben Hansen, one of four founding members and host of The MinMax Show, with a rotating cast of cohorts, contributors, and friends of MinMax additionally contributing to the content. The company is crowdfunded via Patreon, with different contribution tiers offering various incentives, such as receiving the weekly podcast a day early. Who has the worst gaming takes at MinMax? <laughs> Oh, wow. I'm really going to throw my friends under the bus. Yeah. Just like this. And it could be me. I think you and I like a lot of similar games. Mm. I think we have pretty similar. I'm starting to feel the heat on this one. It's starting to hurt my lippies a little. Uh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this one comes through. Maybe. It like it sounds like the violinist is getting killed. <laughs> That's what's so scary. Who has the worst takes at Min Max? I don't know. I don't think anyone does. Bottom but three. I, know I have to answer. <laughs> ben. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me. To level it out. Can I say me? Hey, uh, that's big of you. I'll allow it. Okay, cool. Um, and. Oh, this one's catching up to me. This this one's catching up to me posthumously. I should have taken three bites. Hmm. Are you going for a drink? Marg. Marg. Yeah. The Marg's keeping me alive right now. The tequila really does balance out spice really nicely. It just like it makes it taste good instead of ouch. Nice. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> just one more. Sarah. Wow, that's really messed up that you said all those. Because I don't get Final Final Fantasy fourteen. I don't get it. <laughs> Not anyone can play that game. It's so boring, and she loves it. So I'll just say it for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only one. <laughs> yeah, me personally, I don't <laughs> agree or disagree with either of you. <laughs> I yeah. don't take a stand on that game. Oh. Honestly, how do you feel about Baldur's Gate 3 winning Min Max's Game of the Year thanks to two people weighing in who will never, ever finish the game? That hurts. <laughs> that was a... This was our, our team of researchers this, submitted this oh one. Oh my god. There's a reason that they, this is a good format because having spice in your mouth, I think it tricks your brain into being fight or flight and you get spunky. Oh. Um, so I get it. I get it, Sean Evans. You're a genius. Um, I mean, I wish everyone would go finish that game because it's really good and it's amazing. Um, but I get why someone doesn't have to finish it for it to be their game of the year because it's so big and expansive. I want everyone at Midmax to be forced to beat it. Not just those who voted for it. Good answer. 120 hours. That would be yeah. interesting. That should, I wish we still could do Patreon goals or something. If we had some crazy amount, we yeah. literally all have to play all the way through Baldur's Gate 3. 
I think that would win. I think people that would, would win pay. the internet. Good. I think that would win all of our hearts. <laughs> Best choice. Oh, I'm starting to like cry because of the jokes and also because of the wingies. Well, speaking of which, let's get into wing number six, oh. and I'll get onto sauce number three of four for me. Okay. Okay. Cool. Habanero. Marshalls, whiskey smoked goat. Um, this is from maker Sarah Marshall. Expertly crafted sauce, fine ingredients like whiskey, white balsamic, and date syrup, plus smoked ghost pepper heat. No goat? No goat. Smoke Whiskey smoked ghost? Ah! Did you read this wrong? No, it says angry goat peppers. Is there a goat pepper? Oh, it's the company name. It's Angry Goat Pepper Co. Where's her Marshall's one? Chat remains yeah, terrified that you're not being careful enough around your eyes. Sure. Which I sure haven't been. Don't worry, I'm, use I'm using my new napkins when I wash my eyes. Classy. You smoked goat. I know, this one's fancy. This looks like you could have a table side at a restaurant and dip your bread in. Yummy. Yummy. Okay. Just do them one bite of this. I'm, I'm not going to be the cocky little bastard that you all know and love me at for. It's going to have one bite. One bite and let it sit. See how we do. Okay, are you ready with yeah. the sound effect? Mm hmm <laughs> Oh, that one's really yummy. Why isn't the spice hitting me? <laughs> <laughs> I want to take another bite because it actually is really yummy. Then I'm worried I'm going to regret it. What should I do? Take another bite. The sound effect reviews are in. We almost heard it. I can't imagine what this sounds like. Mmm, that one's really yummy. H funny how I couldn't finish... Well, I kind of finished the last one, but I really want to... Hmm. How are you with spicy food? I love spicy food. Okay. Big spicy food girl. So your tolerance is a factor here. And these sauces not being so I was googling so that. I was googling like what makes some people good at it and others not. Apparently, it's just like a whatever the it's like something sin uh, moccasin or whatever um, that is in wings. Some people just have more or less receptors to be affected by it, and they view it more as a flavor than pain. I guess if you have fewer receptors. Mm. And then um, cap cap casein cap casein everyone's writing in the chat capsaicin? yeah capsaicin and then the more spice you have over time so tolerance also plays a part in it and that you'll your taste buds or whatever get used to viewing it not as like a threat but as like a flavor right that one didn't feel as bad as the previous one that was seventy one thousand Scoville. Well, they say it's not all about the Scoville, as much as it's, we all wish we had an easy marker for what the spiciest is. Yeah, it's also, you gotta think, like, she maybe put more extra, like, the date syrup and stuff, like, that's gotta balance it out a bit. Right. Oh, I wish I had straight date Got syrup you. here. <laughs> Your TikTok four more. about the legality of Pal World has been seen 2.7 million times, which is the same viewership as an episode <laughs> of Bachelor in Paradise on ABC. Can you share your reaction to that data in the form of another TikTok that will go viral? Oh, that's how what my TikTok is as much views as an episode of, of that. That's right. Wong, wong, wong. Oh, I'll do some TikTok sound effects. Oh. I can't really hear them. Well, they're here. They're coming. They're everybody else can hear them really good. I'll dab. Yep, dab. Wait, I gotta say that for the last dab. <laughs> <laughs> the shark one. See, honestly, they need to have Cottonelles on, on the freaking show. They're really nice. They, like, make me feel better to just hold something cold in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> They're waiting on a sponsor. Oh, Cottonelles. Who do you main in Overwatch, and who do you main in Dead by Daylight, and would they be friends in real life? <laughs> My main switch is in Overwatch pretty much on a monthly basis. Right now I'm maining Zenyatta. Um, because he's goaded right now, because they changed the 
you would hate it because you're such a precise shooter kind of guy. The hitboxes are huge in Overwatch now. Like, oh. I was to Torbjorn, and you can turn around as Tor- Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Pull their headphones out. You can turn around as Torbjorn. Whoops. And hammer up at the sky, and it hits the person if they're standing behind you. That's how big the boxes are. Wow. You don't even have to be looking at the person, and it hits them. And um, so that makes Zen really good, because his orbs are already so strong, but they used to have to require a lot more precision right. to uh, land them. And uh, so he's just goaded right now. Plus, Discord Orb is so good, because it's the single tank meta. And uh, if you can kill the tank fast, then you just win the fight. You don't even have to heal that much. It's just about killing the tank as fast as possible. So he's really good at that. Mm -hmm. So I've been really liking playing him. And then I main Dredge in Dead by Daylight, and they would not be friends. Who's... <laughs> Everything that Zenyatta stands for, it. Dredge is the antithesis, I would say. <laughs> Dredge is a, is, he's an original IP made by Behavior. And uh, he is like this monster that's a bunch of different people. Like he, he's like this really gross looking guy and he has like an ugly melty face and like a hook hand and he has like a cloak on. You can see all these hands come out of him. And it's like, I think his lore is that he's a bunch of, like a, a cult died and all the souls became like his ghost. Like, and so he's always trying to find more people to be part of his gross soul bod so when you kill people in the game you do a mori it's called you like suck them into your body and the person's like oh. but cool i like him really cool i like him because he's really good at he teleports around the map via locker so he's a lot of mobility i don't like playing dead by daylight unless i have a lot of mobility because i just feel like i lose in 10 seconds otherwise but yeah he's kind of all about how can i murder everyone on earth and zenyatta is a monk who <laughs> is completely against violence <laughs> Even though he throws orbs yeah, at people's skulls. Yeah, he kills a lot of people for being against violence. He kills the violent ones. So he, in turn, creates less violence. Right? <laughs> I, I haven't what, that's, experienced that's what... a story about revenge yet, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I can't wait to check one out. Yeah. Cycle of violence. Never heard of it. Just kill them first. <laughs> that's what Zenyatta then gone. says. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally how I argued he's good, too. It's like, he's good at killing that guy really fast more than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to wing number seven. All right. The bomb is closing in. That's eight, right? That's eight. So next up is Ginger Goat Tropic Star. What's a little goats? <laughs> What's up with all the goats? <laughs> if you're a goat, shout outs. I can't keep track of which goat is the right goat. Your one. sauces are crushing it right now if you're a goat. This so this was the, this is now. I thought it was earlier. Okay. Schwong, bong, bong, bong. Ginger goat. Uh, this one is 110,000 Scoville. <clears throat> Sizzling into the seventh spot with a blend of super hot chilies, Tropic Star will light up your taste buds with a heaping dash of tart mango, ooh, citrusy lemongrass, and subtle sweetness of star anise. I love that's one of my favorite words ever, anise. Yeah. So fun to say. All right, let's try. I'll be, I'll be safe. All right. Ooh, no. Oh. Yep. <laughs> that one's spicy. In 2019, agriculture contributed around 1.7% to Canada's GDP. 24.08% came from the industry and 67.67% from the service sector. How would you rank the 10 Canadian provinces from best to worst? Oh. Worst, Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone who's from Quebec. Uh, everyone I've met who's from Quebec is lovely. It's just, as a lawyer, Quebec is so annoying. <laughs> Everything's harder. Quebec. Alberta. British Columbia. <laughs> We're going worst to best. Yeah, this is worst to best. Saskatchewan. Manitoba. Yukon. Northwest Territories. Northwest Territories, Yukon. <laughs> PEI. You got this. Ontario. No, New Brunswick's got to be lower than what I'm doing right now. Put New Brunswick under Northwest Territories and then same list. Uh, and Ontario. 
Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia number one. Yeah, Nova Scotia number one. Except for all of our current governments <laughs> and policies. It's just a nice vibe here if you ignore how corrupt and awful our government is. <laughs> but hey, I'm used to that. Yummy. <laughs> Very much one in my comfort zone. Okay. Good. Oh. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we have a recurring segment on the show called Explain That Gram, and what we do is I ask you something about my grandma, and you try and help me understand it. Does that sound good? <laughs> that sounds really good and clever. Do you have the, the stream pulled up? Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's... This is my... Oh, it's reversed. This is my... Uh, image in my contacts for my grandma on my phone. Why? That's what I'm asking you. Who's what little boy is that? I don't know. You don't remember putting that as your grandma's pick? No. That's it's not like you it's as you a know it's been boy. grandfathered in from ten iPhones now. You can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> he looks pretty sassy. Whew, that one's hot. It's true. Oh. Is that the question? What? <laughs> That's been true. Yes. I was hoping for a little um, more concrete I'd... of an answer, but. I bet maybe your grandma sent you a meme that had that little boy in it and you laughed really hard and just thought this would be funny to be for her. Mm. And then years later, you just can't remember doing this that. This is my grandma now. <laughs> is it weird that when you see that little boy's face, you think my mother's mother, the matriarch <laughs> of our family? <laughs> Ironic to ever be a little boy. That's probably just me being funny at some <laughs> it's point. It's the opposite. But the opposite is a grandma could get mm -hmm. <laughs> a little boy. After jaw surgery as a kid, you were high off the dental drugs and had hallucinations that you were inside the game of Nancy Drew you were playing. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the German one. Um, Nance, chat, help me out. Nancy Drew <laughs> in the something castle. Um, I was so zooted on drugs. Yep. And I also hadn't eaten properly in weeks. So I was, I was looking fit, though. Like, best my body's ever looked. <laughs> <laughs> Through jaw surgery, not gonna lie. Well, yeah, I lost that jaw weight. <laughs> Yeah, and you eat one thing and you gain 20 pounds in 10 seconds because your body's like, <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> like, fill her up. Captive curse. Yes, I think that was it. And I remember I was so bored and I, it was, I was in so much pain and so uncomfortable. And I remember I could barely walk a few feet without fainting. And uh, I walked a few feet and then had to lay down before I could get to my home, my, my family computer to play. <laughs> <laughs> it's true and i remember my mom left to do errands she's like do not get up from this couch i'm gonna be so mad if you get up and <laughs> do something and get hurt okay do not because i had fainted in the shower like the day before so my mom was really sure. nervous and uh <laughs> woke up naked with her screaming over me she's like hey, <laughs> oh my god it's so funny it was really funny looking back um and i laid down and i think because I kind of became like weirdly half fainty on the way. I think while playing the game, I just got really confused and I was too lightheaded and I got a bit, it kind of felt like I was playing, a, having a dream or something, but <laughs> it didn't give you any insights into the mystery, into the puzzles. I definitely became a worse sleuth. If that's what <laughs> you're see. asking. Starved. And barely conscious. Good to know. I think. Nancy always does her her sleuthing on a full belly, so I was maybe a bit panicked. <laughs> I should hope so. I really didn't have a question for that one, but I'm glad we talked about it. I have a few fun stories out of that jaw surgery. Jaw surgery was hard. Uh, there's a really funny... My sister tells it the best, but I came home from the hospital, and they broke both my jaws, and uh, taken, I think it was a couple millimeters with my gum and shoved my jaw up and then wired me shut. So I was like, my face was so Yeesh. mad. And, uh, sorry, my nose is running a lot. Um, I remember I, when I was coming over from the hospital, especially I was so drugged up. I could barely think. And my face was like swollen cause it was trying to protect itself. And it came down to like here. Cause 
it was just like, I looked like a frog prince from a <laughs> Nutcracker play or something. I looked terrifying. <laughs> And Emma said, my little sister Emma said she was in her room and I have to walk by her room to get to my room and her bed like faces the door. And my mom was like, oh, say hi to Haley. Like she's back. And Emma said when I looked at her, she, it was the first time she felt pure horror in person. (laughs) (laughs) She said like, I've seen movies with scary monsters, but it was like one of them was in front of me. (laughs) She's like, I've never been more scared of a human being my life you looked terrifying i was like thanks <laughs> it's really nice and then a, a week or so after that they were all having pizza for dinner and i was just sitting there with my mouth wired not, not able to eat anything and she she went up with her pizza to her room and ate it and cried <laughs> she loved me so much and felt so bad <laughs> such a good sister <laughs> yeah yeah but my body got snatched and my jaw got fixed and then I ate a burger and gained it all back. So what are, what are we even doing? Happy ending. With that surgery. Happy ending. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. It's time for the bomb. And I'm going to move ah. up to the last dab redux. My one hot one sauce I have. Oh, you should save that for when I'm at the last dab too. I, the, here's, here's the thing. Every Hot Ones I've ever mm-hmm. watched, clearly Da Bomb is by far the worst one. And frankly, the only one that seems really bad at all. And okay. so but I kind of have to match the badness in the only way that this, I can. The Bomb has a hundred, uh, supposedly, has 135,600 Scoville. And a, I, the last dab experience has 2.6 million. It's not all about the Scoville, though. People always say, from my Hot Ones watch, as just as a viewer... It's always like yeah. the bomb is the one that's horrible. Oh no! Okay. And of course, it's a good story pacing, right? Number eight, the b- dark part of the second act. You should be at your lowest. This is where the the hero is at their lowest, and they need a place to go. Let's go up. So the nuke's just been dropped on my mouth in a second. That's right. Oh no! All right. You ready? Cheers. Cheers. Dink. Oh, you're going right from the bottle, eh? I'm going to take a little fingy. A fingy I won't use to scratch my eye. Oh, that's going to be a lot. Oh, that tastes like ass. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Yep, that's the worst one immediately. Ooh. Ooh. That's the worst one immediately. Taste. Taste and heat. Blech. I'm not finishing that one. Ugh. He shows how big a that chunk you bad. got. Decent, decent bite. Yeah, Solid bite. You going for a bevy? Oh, yeah. Thank that you. That's bad. Mm-hmm. Can Sean Evans not drink unless his guest drinks? That's what he says. Oh. Blech. I hate that one. All the other ones had nice flavors. That one tasted like licorice mixed with like sweat right mm. oh it's hot too mine's really hot as well <laughs> oh. i've never done spicy content really besides the <laughs> extra life where we had peppers for the first year i did it and you know you have other people to kind of carry the conversation and keep things moving and stuff but now we're both just talk really spiced up and talking about how spicy things are yeah i'm losing faith in the the content's ability to carry itself. That's a hot one. Hence the name. Uh, I f- forgot oh. to finish this question. It just says something about being a woman. <laughs> the answer's hard. <laughs> what does womanhood mean to you in the gaming space? Are there ways you feel punished for it or ways it's helped you find community? Yes. Why are you giving me this one after the month? <laughs> oh this one's so spicy this is like 10 times spicier than all the other ones combined i'm saying that's how it's always felt and i'm very interested to have this direct line of feedback it's starting to feel the good though i'm starting to feel okay. high off it the only time i feel okay is when there's an active slosh of ice water going into Yes, the that's how I felt on the ghost peppers. I was like, I need to be actively drinking milk or else I'm in horrible pain. And that caused problems. Really mm-hmm. should have been swirling it. Especially because I was kind of on an empty stomach from running around producing the stream all night. 
Oh, learned no, a lot that night. Either. Learned mm. a lot. Thanks for asking me such a deep and meaningful question. I really did oh. my research. Mm -hmm. um, to find out you're a woman. I think um, one thing I really like about being a woman is that when you walk into a room that's predominantly male, you notice the other women, and there's a connection there immediately. You don't have to think about it. And I think men miss out on that, and I actually feel bad for men because of that. Because it's just kind of nice to know you have someone in the room who... Oh my god, this fucking wing is so hot. <laughs> this is the worst one. You were right, you called it. This is the worst one by my I only have one bite, too. It's really nice to know, especially when you're going to a career that's Male dominated. <laughs> that when you see another woman in the room, you know they've gone through similar experiences as you. Yeah. And you have like an immediate feeling there. And it's almost lets you become friends with them faster, which is kind of nice, I've found. Like, not that you have to be friends with every person you meet in your career who's doing something similar to you, but it just, it, it's like a de facto thing that just happens. And, and it feels good. It feels safe and nice in the moment. I think about that a lot, and I actually do feel bad that men don't really have that as much. Um, in terms of the game space, um, I'm excited by how much better it is, even since I used to play games with my brother when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I remember um, not having a single friend who was a girl who played games, and now I have so many. That feels good. Nice. Um, and just that I even remember playing, even back in 2016, like when Overwatch first came out, mm -hmm. There's so much more toxicity, just gender-based toxicity in that game. And there's there still is, don't get me wrong, but it's way less. And more people stand up for you in, in the moment, too, which feels good. Um, there's other games that are shite, like Call of Duty, though. I don't, I don't play that. I never go and chat in Call of Duty, because every man in there is just the, just the worst. But certain games will attract certain fan bases, I think, that... So it's, you just have to do certain things to avoid that. But I think it, it gets better with every year. And uh, I think it's so stupid that we have separate male women esports. I don't get that at all. I think it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like, it's like it's like someone trying to argue my boobs are in the way of the keyboards. I can't shoot the, the freaking Cassidy on the other team fast enough. But like, what what gender based limitations are there to click something? It's ridiculous. I think that needs to go. Yeah. Immediately. And I get that. I don't, I don't, to be clear, I don't hate it when there's women based esports leagues just to support other women or whatever. I don't like when men say, shove them over there, not in our league. That's like what I don't like. And then there'll be like one woman in the entirety of the Overwatch League for the whole entire time it runs. And like no one seems to think that's a problem <laughs> and it doesn't change. Yeah. It's, it seems like kind of a, a chance for gaming to carve a path for mainstream yeah. sports for other things in general to set yeah. that example but instead to to follow uh the norm yeah it's like it's like it's replicating itself with chess back however many years ago it's like the, the exact same weird energy towards like women can't play chess it's like why you freaking asshole what do you think we're so stupid <laughs> like it's just crazy it, when you meet people who like, tell me you haven't met a single woman in your life. They'll tell me if you think they can't play games or something. Or, like, I... when you enter chat at the end. And, it, like, my when I talk to my girlfriends who play shooters like me, it's, like, the best thing to do is after you absolutely slop up is just do a little, like, chi-chi at the end. <laughs> so they know that the girl was the one slopping up. <laughs> like, you don't have to talk the whole time at the end. Check a little good game, everyone. <laughs> so they'll go, oh, that tracer who was 40 and two is a chick. Come on. Like maybe they'll change their mind over the next 10 years. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> step one. That's all we can do. <laughs> I think it's because women have such deep thoughts and they think about their feelings and mm -hmm. their relationship with the world around them. But men only think about yeah. gaming and the next, when they're going to be able to game next. The next dub. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, 
it's funny how men historically have used games as an excuse to talk to each other over long periods of time. It's like society has taught you guys that unless you have a distraction, you can't just sit and have a nice conversation with each other for a long time. Yeah, parallel, need, parallel need... hanging out. Two eyes, four eyes staring at the screen. Sports, yeah, whatever. Yeah, like you need, um, you need something to do um, so it's not just two guys talking gay. Like, what do you mean? It's just <laughs> friends having a nice conversation. Like, I don't know. I just know women are more likely to just sit with each other in a room and talk for a long time. But And not that men don't do that. But you know what yeah. I mean? We, we're we not as socialized to think that we need an, a, an extra reason to hang out and sit around and talk about things. And sometimes the best male conversations happen when they're playing games because they're just like, oh, I'm allowed to talk now. <laughs> this is socially acceptable, question mark. Um, and then they get deep with their bros. You know, you guys can just do that when you're sitting in a chair. I don't need a game to do that. I, yeah, I, I, it's not that it never happens, but I do find myself having to practice and work up to like the idea of saying, what if we didn't play something instead of us looking for something to play? What if we just didn't play something? We just listened to music and talked, you know, I don't yeah, always see, like, feel comfortable growing... floating that. Yeah. And like, I think girls are more likely to be like, I want to go sit in your room. It's like, yeah. And you just sit there and talk for hours and it's like you 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 expand your friendship in such a unique way when there's no distractions, I think, and you learn a lot more about them. And not that I still play, you know, I still make friends and t have deep chats playing games, too. I just think that, of course, society makes it seem like men need that first and then. Or not that you need it, but it's it, it coerces you to. How I phrase this, my mouth's finally starting to calm down. <laughs> Y'all are, aren't as encouraged to just sit and talk and express your feelings, I think, is all, which is too bad. And you use games as an excuse to talk with your bros, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of friends I've known for years who I feel like, you know, online friends who I feel like I don't know really deeply. Like, we've talked for hundreds and thousands of hours, but it's always in yeah. constant states of, of riffing and joking around, which is fine. And I value and those like, friendships, but there's something to that. That's so interesting. And see, I... I have, I do have male friends who are straight that I feel like I had to kind of uh, reach into them and get that info and then they became better at talking like that with me. And then all of my friends who are girls or gay friends or queer friends almost kind of just instinctually were not better, but like just, it's almost like they had those skills a bit more automatically when we were, especially when younger in middle school and high school and stuff. It's like... Oh, <laughs> what do you mean you <laughs> have never thought about <laughs> what other people think about? <laughs> I don't know. It's like there's a moment when you're a girl and you're growing up and you have male friends and you suddenly realize that they like I've had some male friends that I've lost touch with because they became assholes. And it's like, wow, this sucks because you were such a sweet boy. And then what happened it's just like i don't know it's 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 hard to deal with because you're like where's that person i was friends with for seven years all of a sudden you go to high school and they change and stuff and you're just like oh they became misogynistic how did that happen you think that knowing them that well you could help that not be a thing but i don't know some people it just kind of happens and you just have to be like well whoops we lost a soldier yeah <laughs> What can we do? Yeah. <laughs> what going on there? But it's it's weird to see. It's a very specific sad girl thing when your friend grows up to be a jerk after he hits puberty. You hear bad stories from other girls about things he's done. And you're like, oh, crap. I don't like him anymore. Yeah. Mm. You owned a rare Halo 2 Beanie Baby and attempted to put it up for auction. Sorry. Attempted to put it up for auction. Did you ever sell it? And can you guess how disappointed I was when I googled Halo 2 Beanie Baby and saw it was not related to the video game at all? I did? Where did you find that? <laughs> when did I do that? <laughs> I don't remember. Put on eBay? Yeah. you Maybe you didn't sell it, but you were looking at prices, at least. To see oh, if it was worth I remember selling. Posting and it's just a Beanie Baby with a Halo. <laughs> It's just a bear with a halo on it. Was this the rare one that has a brown nose and on a black nose? Brown nose, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I think we were excited and thought it was worth something. And then, of course, bee babies aren't worth anything anymore, no matter how right. I think only the Princess Diana one is even kind of worth something anymore. And that's only because she died. <laughs> it's not because Beanie Babies are <laughs> Yeah, right that's cool. a, a technicality. <laughs> Yeah, they need like a 
deeper when Beanie Babies need to latch onto beloved public figures <laughs> died Beanie Baby. Um, but we, the reason my family and I were doing that is because we found my brother's uh, shiny Gen 1 Charizard mm. in a, his sleeve of Pokemon cards, which I to this day think is mine and he took from me, but I'm not going to go down that path. I didn't even bring <laughs> it up in the moment. I was like, this is even worth the family drama. He can just have it. Wow. I love him that much. But uh, we were Googling prices and that was worth a lot. So we were like, what about the baby babies? And we had a nice family moment. We we're all just sitting on the floor like that. Remember that picture in the divorce court of the couple splitting up their baby babies? <laughs> <laughs> right. In front of the judge. It was like that. But if it was like a Christmas special and everyone was getting along, who's nice. That's nice. We're like, what about this one? And we're like, no, <laughs> what about this one? Oh, it's worth two dollars. Oh, I'm just now over that. It's a bomb. I took that yeah, long. Yeah, I'm glad. We I really enjoyed that conversation. I'm glad we had a nice a nice meaty one to, <laughs> to make a gap before wing number nine to here. To feel that pain as you asked me such a poignant and thoughtful question <laughs> was made my brain explode, which is why they call it the bomb. Because I was like, I really need to do this really nice and thoughtful question justice, but Jesus Christ, I wanna cut my tongue off. Like how do you how do you talk? Yep. <laughs> when that's the case. Oh. I wonder if we could buy hot pepper game reviews. I don't feel like they're around anymore. I, I forget. Was that a Game Grumps thing? What was it? Hot Pepper Gaming? Hot Pepper Game? And they had different celebrities eating that. a hot pepper and doing a game review real fast. Well, I don't know. I would have watched that. I don't remember that. That wasn't a Game Grumps thing. It was like 12 years ago. Anyway, wing number nine. Okay. Dawson's Hot Sots. Dawson's <laughs> Hot Sots. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. Dobby anymore. Dada. Zuzi's. <laughs> Next up, Dobby Dada. <laughs> Zubi Zemba, Zubi Sa Seven... 620,000 Scoville. Our friend Brody Dawson archives both one of a kind flavor and head banging heat in this number nine hot sauce. Get ready for a spice rush from the potent seven pot peppers plus sweet maple syrup, sambuca, and fennel seed. That sounds interesting. Fennel, yummy. I might grab another. Michael, if you're listening, can you get another mark for me, please? It's the only thing that's kind of been working. <laughs> um, if you wouldn't mind, dear. Okay, it, the, the alcohol oh. helps with the <laughs> mental load. Wow, he was listening. It, it, he was. I saw him commenting a little while ago. Nice. Hi, Michael. I have the lemonade in here to mix it with Michael. Sorry, Leo. <laughs> Peek behind the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> it's my kind of margarita he's telling me that's not a margarita don't you tell me that oh look i'm i'm already stripping it like i'm gonna eat the whole thing what am i doing i'm just gonna take a bite to see mm, crunchy pepper bits in there no it's the the pink lemonade this one. is yummy by the way yeah. i do like this product i'm sure it's not for sale but i'm sure they have something very similar because they're always re-upping mm. their product line is the flavor good, at least? Yeah, it definitely has flavor. That's good. This one's so much better than the last dab. It's still really hot, but I'm like, the flavor's worth it. Whereas the... Or it's a bomb, I mean, not the last uh -huh. dab. <laughs> oh, Jesus, it, this one is hot. The bomb just tasted like straight up butt crack and then hurt me. <laughs> it's just like, what's the goddamn point? At least this is a little bit yummy. How long is the bottle of the bomb going to sit around before you throw it away? Do you think eight years? Yeah, that sounds right. Actually, that sounds okay. right on point. Yeah, I know. I think I know you pretty well. Mm. Yeah, you know me. You know how long I keep bottles. <laughs> and even eight. <laughs> That's a really deep female based question. <laughs> Tell us about three pools and how someone might find a hookup to get there. Oh my god, three pools. Thank you, buddy. Um, three pools is an... Look, I might finish this one. <laughs> it's really hot, but nice. it's good. Yeah, the bomb's the worst, for sure. That one's way spicier and worse. Even though it's less Scoville. A sip less Scoville than this. Um... Mm. I always, I always think you're farting for one second. <laughs> <laughs> it's like then I've done my job. And then this, I... <laughs> oh, that one's hot. So, three pools is an awesome waterfall swimming hole. That's the kind of place you only get to go if you know someone who's been there. 
you have to go and get off on the highway like 50 minutes from Halifax. Mm. Tequila's the answer. They need tequila on hot ones. It actually does immediately make you feel better. Um, mm, it's some spicy. Um, you get off and you drive on this dirty dirt road. And you don't even see a path to park. You just have to park on the side of like this weird dirt road. Mm. And you have to cross this person's yard. And they're just chill with it. They, I guess they're just like used to it. Oh, this one's hot. I shouldn't have eat the whole thing, but it was really good. <laughs> Mm. Truly the only time you feel okay is when you're sipping something. And you can't talk while you do that. I know. And it, why the show inher mm. why hot ones inherently will never work. We'll never catch on. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. We'll never finish. Um oh, I probably should eat the whole thing. Mm. Um and then Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's this beautiful this beautiful, what's the word? <laughs> Waterfall. <laughs> that that is a pretty self-explanatory word, I have to say. I know. I just even just said it too. <laughs> this one's kicking my butt, but I like. I'm not as bothered by the heat as the bomb. Right. You're also getting something out of it. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's not just pain for pain's sake. It's heat be with like a purpose behind it. Which I don't mind. Right. That's all we can hope for out of life. The purpose is to make me shit my pants later. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Hot One style joke. To... <laughs> <laughs> that would have crushed with Sean. He would have stood up, walked over, high five, Jeff patted you on the back. Oh my god, yeah, the tables are so far apart now. Post COVID. Right. Ours are thousands of miles cross. apart. Yeah. Which is overkill. Because we we're really scared of COVID. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, sorry. I'm taking a long time answering this one. Cause this is hurting. This one is hurting. Um, and yeah, it's this beautiful um waterfall. You can swim, you can jump off the waterfall. Mm. Last time I went there, this random lady appeared out of the woods and was like, Do you guys want me to take your picture? And we're like, sure. And she just took our picture and then went back into the woods. And we're like, that was weird. <laughs> mm. And she died 30 years ago that nice night? <laughs> She's the ghost of three pools. And but she was really she was just a nice lady. It was hiking? Question mark. I don't so know. this is just a, I think a, a an oasis in nature that's not like owned and you don't pay, buy a ticket. Yeah. It's just a secret place someone has it's to It's not monetized to. in any way. Yeah. It's like, but now, you know, now that the internet exists. And Reddit exists, you know, I'm sure you can Google how to get to three pools and someone on Reddit will give you exact directions. But back when I was in high school, it was fun because it was like, who knows how to get there? And you had to find that person. Right. And like figure it out. Have, it had a, more of a special flair. We have it. a place in Minneapolis called Secret Beach that is Ooh. now the most popular beach in the city. Uh, see, that's what you want to avoid. Yeah, it's still cool, though. Gatekeeping's allowed when it's to do with bodies of water. <laughs> it's the only <laughs> time gatekeeping's allowed. Yeah. Preserve the nature. With a side of girl bossing. With a side of girl bossing and feeling better than other people because you know where it is. You ready for number 10? The last dab? Yeah. Are we doing a, da a little dabby or should I do it last dab? Oh, you oh. put a dab on oh, it, I yeah. Didn't, I didn't go schwong with the last one. Shwa, last one and curd one. Shwa, 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 shwa. All right, the last dab experience. No e, just an x. Okay, I'm getting a big, big glob. Two point six million Scoville. Welcome oh, to bigger. the top of the mountain. <clears throat> the last dab Apollo was previously the pinnacle of the journey, but for season twenty two, we're taking Mount Scoville to towering new heights thanks to Smoking Ed's iconic Pepper X. Now officially the world's hottest chili in dried, fresh, and all-natural dissolute forms. If you live the Hot Ones tradition, go ahead, add extra dab, then buckle up and enjoy the experience. Buckle up. All right, I'll do it. The only one I haven't finished, I will note, is the bomb. I finished all every Really? Other wow. Yeah. Impressive. <laughs> F the bomb. 
All right. Oh, I should uh, do this up higher. Yeah, let me see how much you're doing, because I do want to match that. Oh! That's a big dab. <laughs> take a little more? That was a bit too much, I meant. <clears throat> okay. I got a... You've been eating this one the whole time. I got a pinky a last dab. <laughs> Pickle, if you're watching, can you get another mark ready for me? <laughs> <laughs> I already finished this one. Get a bucket. Get a bucket of marks. All right. Cheers. All right, Leo. Cheers. Dink. Dink. Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big dab I took. I think I'll be okay, though. Holy hell. We covered a lot of ground today, but to close things out, I wanted to have you use your lawyer powers for us. I'm going to send you an excerpt from the Honkai Star Rail Terms of Service, and I want you to read it out loud for us and translate it into as few words of understandable English as possible. Holy. Okay. Send it to you in your Discord DM. I can't even get there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, this one's fucked. Worse than the bomb? Yeah, I need water. I'm in a rough spot as well. Maybe a beer. Oh, oh, ice cream. Thanks, Michael. Nice. Oh hell yeah! How'd you know? I didn't prep my fiance that I was gonna be doing this, but I might just yell ice cream across the house. <laughs> Leo needs ice cream. <laughs> kind of our dynamic. Woo! That's really hot. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm hurting. I heard from my one of my <sighs> moderators, Fred, that ice cream's really good because of the fat. <laughs> I could have told you ice cream's really good. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. For spice, Leo. Yeah, for spice. Oh, gotcha. I'm sorry. I need a minute here. <laughs> this bowl of ice cream. You have to try to do it while you're hurting. I'm sorry. I'm okay. sorry, but that is part of the appeal. <sighs> oh. Okay. Okay. So it's a standard limitation of liability. So all this is saying is, uh, in the event of. You're a breach of the agreement. You're indemnifying them of fault. So say, for example, I uploaded violating IP to Genshin Impact, and they were getting sued for it. Because you indemnified them. The liability shifts to you and off of them. It's similar to a safe harbor provision, like the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Holy <laughs> hell! <laughs> so, you agree that when you use those services, you're doing so entirely at your own risk. Um, as is means that, like once they say something is provided as is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying so many tears when something is provided as is it means that you can't say that you relied on using it to a detriment so I can't say oh I thought this was going to cure my freaking diseases they're like I didn't say that it's a fucking video game idiot <laughs> Okay. okay, but and then all, all of its agents. I'm sorry, <laughs> all of its agents, affiliates, employees, officers, managers, directors, etc. You're also indemnifying them, and so they're also saying that they're not responsible for if their software has errors in it, 
if you were using it for a particular purpose and that didn't work out, like streaming or something, maybe. Um, it doesn't matter if you've been advised of such risks, you're still at fault if those things happen. You're shifting the liability from them onto you. Man engage, <laughs> thanks for the raid. We just completed the Hot Ones Challenge. Haley is doing legal translations for us after having the tenth and final wing. Well, I'm feeling I'm feeling better. I'm on the up and up. What about you? I'm feeling okay. I'm still in a little pain. Can you get this? So this is a limitation of liability. It's item number 12 on Honkai Star Rails in terms of service. Can you get it down to like five words? Okay. Not our fault. You're dumb. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what I need for each item on this list. Haley. Not. You completed the gauntlet, taken on the wings of death, living to tell the tale, and now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. Oh, check out Bonus Pot. <laughs> <laughs> the companion podcast to the Bin Max show. Every Monday at 4 I'll p.m. Central, should they check that out? Hell yeah, every Monday at 4 p.m. Central. Hell yeah. It comes in waves, doesn't it? Yeah. You think it's over? I think I'll be o I think I'll be okay. And I'm like, oh. And then a ru rush of that's really hot. That's crazy. Um it says 91% pepper X, which is pretty scary. Shout out to Fred, one of our Discord mods, for suggesting ice cream. It really is working. Um that's great. you can also fi find me in my home. Oh, being a lawyer. <laughs> At what times? <laughs> kind of a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. But if you're a game dev and want and want to even just have a free call with me and ask me IP questions, go for it. That's been happening a lot lately. A lot of um, people have been emailing me lately saying, hey, I found you through MinMax. I love MinMax. I'm like, that is so cute. I love that. Nice. I'll chat with you about IP as much as you want. And then, yeah. If you have work you want me to do, I can do that too, I guess. For money. <laughs> then it's for money. Yeah. Great job, <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> Thanks, Leo. Really good questions. Thanks. Yeah, me and Hanson. Maybe slightly more on the Hanson side, if anything. He, he had some great research. I, I could hear Ben's writing voice writing writing tone in some of those questions for sure yes and he is obviously a more experienced interviewer than me and maybe would have made more sen sense and maybe would have done a better job but i got no hair like sean evans so so that's why we went this route with it uh thanks everybody for watching I just almost launched a snot rocket <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing at that a second Sorry, this, you were wrapping this up. was New Show Plus, which I never once said the entire time. It's our weekly show <laughs> where patrons vote on what show we should make, and this one won by a lot. So you can vote for episode two, not next week, because we're all at GDC. We're thinking of taking that week off, but the week after, uh, we'll yeah. keep doing it. And we're thinking about ordering more sauces, too, so I can have them and do them along with the guest, which that's what episode two will be, is a different uh, person from MinMax getting interviewed. Who do you think we should... Get in the hot seat next. Um, I feel like a deep dive on Janet is overdue. Oh, yeah. That what... That's from I feel like she'd be good at Spice, too. Yeah, maybe we should go that way, probably, is whoever feels most uh <laughs> capable of handling it. Mm -hmm. Uh, So keep an eye out for, for that sure. on our Patreon and on twitch.tv slash show live episodes Tuesday at noon central every week. Again, except next week, so pretty much every week. Uh, thanks. Hell thanks yeah. for watching, everybody. Sean, to you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Every week, we let Patreon supporters choose which new show we create with New Show Plus. Should we create another episode of the show you just watched? Check out the biggest new game release? Get into Sea of Thieves? Create an exercise show? It is your call. So thanks to everybody who subscribes on YouTube or supports us over on Patreon. MinMax exists because of you. As always, if you enjoy MinMax content, any help telling a friend is appreciated.